Oh look, another Jeep. Let's see if they wave. Nope, nope, did not wave at all. Wasn't having it. <laughs> Apparently, there's a thing called the Jeep wave where if you're in a Jeep, if you're a Jeeper and you see another Jeeper, you're supposed to wave or flash your headlights, but clearly that guy uh, didn't get that memo. Oh, also, apparently, Jeepers really like to duck each other. Back in January 2023, Jeep unveiled this, the Avenger, and almost instantly, people loved it. It started winning award after award after award. European Car of the Year, World Women's Car of the Year. In fact, in a short space of time, this went on to become one of the most decorated cars in all of Europe. Must be brilliant then. Well, I'll be the judge of that, shall I? Before we dig into how good it is, let's talk about what it is. It's an all-electric family car about the size of a Ford Puma or Nissan Juke. It comes with a 54 kilowatt hour battery for a range of about 249 miles, recharges at 100 kilowatts DC and costs around 36 grand. It's also designed specifically for urban families, which might seem a bit strange given that that's not historically been Jeep's target audience. Even though it is quite small, it still has a lot of familiar Jeep hallmarks. I'm not gonna show you everything. We've already done a walk around, but I'll show you some key features, including this seven slot grille, which has been a mainstay on pretty much every single Jeep. Not sure if you noticed this, but on all Jeeps, the slots are angled backwards slightly. The idea being that the extra lean protects the radiator from damage if you're an idiot and you crash it into something. Now obviously there is no radiator in this car, it's electric and there's also no engine so there's nothing to cool but the slots do look really nice. I also like these split level lights and also the big muscular wheel arches and around the back you get a set of LED X-shaped rear lights which by the way are designed to resemble the X you get on old American style petrol canisters for some reason. This is an electric car that doesn't make sense. And yeah, there's something else you get as well, which is a lot of plastic everywhere. According to Jeep, all that plastic is in place to help protect the Avengers' great looks. Most car damage is caused by low speed bumps in car parks and by those who chuck it off road. And so the plastic should minimize scratches. It could also be very useful, especially around the doors, not to mention being cheaper to replace. I'm not sure I buy that completely though, because let's face it, is this car cheaper because it has plastic all around it? I'm not sure it is. I reckon Jeep are still charging you the full price that you'd expect to pay for a car with metal and paint. Also, if you damage a car with metal, right, all you do is you pop down to Halfords, get some polish, get some T-cut, and you buff that out. If this plastic gets damaged, it's very difficult to actually do a spot repair. And what that means is you'll have to buy a whole new bumper from guess who? Jeep. That's right, they've made a lucrative little sideline in replacement parts. Mmm, well done. The Avengers boot is quite small, but according to Jeep, it offers enough room to store 2,443 rubber ducks. We'll take their word for it. There's some underfloor storage for a charging cable, but only 355 liters, so it's smaller than the space you get in a Duke or Puma. As for the rear, don't expect much in the way of creature comforts or space. Legroom is just about good enough with the front seats adjusted for a six foot driver, but headroom is more than decent. Jeep doesn't provide any armrests, there's no rear ventilation and only a single USB port. Okay, let's talk about the interior now. On the whole, I think it's really well designed, it looks really cool and I love this as a feature, the horizontal function beam, which in this case is finished in the same as the exterior colour, which by the way is called Sun. On the downside, this function beam in Europe has ambient lights, lighting on the edges of the beam, but in the UK we don't get that sadly, maybe because of Brexit or because they couldn't figure out a technical way to integrate the lights, but that's a sad state of affairs. Speaking of sad state of affairs, there's a lot of plastic in this car as well. Plastic all over the doors, plastic all over the dash, down here on the lower section, and it moves quite a lot as well, especially on the center console, there's a lot of movement going on, so it doesn't feel quite as premium as the exterior of the car would have you believe. 
On the whole though, good amount of storage. So you get storage down here below the function beam and that gives you space for keys, coins, a mobile phone. And one of the interesting things about this is that it comes with a plastic mat with what they call the X camo pattern. And that gives you a bit of grip so that all your things don't slide about as you go around corners. You also get a decent amount of space in the center console, which is big enough for a couple of cans of water, and it's adjustable to suit different size bottles or cans. And down here, you also have what looks like an iPad cover, and you can fold this in different ways to enlarge or ensmallen the aperture as you see fit. It's a nice piece of design, and again, it comes with the X camo pattern, which looks really nice as well. In terms of overall storage capacity, Jeep are very proud. They say it has 34 liters of storage, which is about double what you get in a normal car. And that's enough space for exactly 580 ping pong balls. It sounds impressive until you go looking at the specific spaces and then you realize they're not all as big and useful as they could be. For example, the glove box. When I got in this car, the manuals weren't in the glove box. They were in the door pockets because it turns out the manuals are too big to fit comfortably in the glove box. It's just a weird shape. They do fit if you mangle them, but yeah, that could be better. Credit where it's due though, you do get a load of physical buttons which makes operating the heating and climate control absolutely a breeze whenever you're driving, but you don't get a particularly decent stereo system in my eyes. It's, it's pretty average. Not quite car of the year material if you ask me. So what is the Jeep Avenger like to drive? Is it car of the year good? Well, we'll find out in just a minute, but the first thing I'll say is that it's very refined. This is actually the most refined Jeep I've ever driven. And of course, that's mostly down to the fact that it's electric, but it's an incredibly easy and pleasant car to drive. There's a little bit of road noise from those big tires and a little bit of wind noise from the fact it's shaped a bit like a brick but it's not as bad as you might think. And the controls are super light. The steering is light, the brake and pedal feel really nice and progressive. This is a really pleasant car to drive. A couple of downsides for me. One is that the seats aren't electric. They might be an option, but you have to manually adjust those and adjusting the height especially can be a bit of a faff. And it's even more of a faff if it's a family car for you and you're constantly changing between drivers. So setting up the perfect driving position for you, if you're taller than your other half, might become a little bit of a pain. Also, even though it has heated seats, there's no direct button to access those heated seats. You've actually got to go into the menu system, into climate, and then choose the driver or passenger heated seat option there. Again, not the end of the world, but these things could be made slightly easier. One thing I'm really loving is how square and small the car is. You can literally see where the edges of the Avenger are, front and rear, and that means it's very easy to maneuver around town, really easy to park, and you've also got reverse parking cameras and a drone view to help you get the car into a space. I'm not the world's biggest fan of these drive selector buttons down here on the center console for park, reverse, neutral, drive, and extra brake regeneration. I'd rather have a stick, but at least they work. While we're on the subject of maneuvering, have a listen to this. You hear that? That is the sound of the indicator playing you a beat whenever you indicate to turn left or right. At first, when I heard it, I thought it might get quite annoying, but I quite like it. I kind of want to bust a freestyle rap every time I go for a drive. That's cool. In terms of performance, the Avenger doesn't have an awful lot. So this car uses a single motor driving the front wheels. It makes 156 horsepower and 260 newton meters. And that's good for 0 to 62 in 9.6 seconds, which, okay, it's not the end of the world, but you will realize how slow it is when you're pulling out of junctions or pulling onto roundabouts, because when you think you've got enough room to do those maneuvers and you put your foot down, you suddenly realize it's a little bit more gutless than you might have thought. Interestingly, there are many different drive modes in this car. So there's eco, there's normal, and there's sports, plus a whole bunch of off-road modes. And the amount of power that you get 
varies depending on which mode you happen to be in. Eco mode only gives you 82 horsepower. Normal mode gives you 106 horsepower and it's only in sport mode where you get the full 156. So you might wanna leave the car in sport mode if you're the kind of person who's always running late or you find yourself doing last minute maneuvers that you wanna survive. What's the ride quality like? It's actually pretty decent. I was a bit concerned about that to begin with because Jeep told me they've increased the damping force of this car. They've made it stiffer in order to improve the body control. Now normally when you do that, you end up with a really stiff, harsh ride, but the Avenger is not too bad. It feels great on flat surfaces, obviously, and on larger bumps, it's actually pretty good. The only places where it might come a little bit unstuck is when you're on an uneven B road, where different corners of the car are doing different things at different times. And in those situations, it can feel a bit like a newborn giraffe struggling to stay level. But for the most part, it feels good. So what's the ducking issue? Well, apparently, if you're a Jeep owner, it's become a thing to duck fellow Jeepers. In other words, placing ducks on other people's Jeeps to show how much you like them. Why? Well, it was started by one Jeep driver many years ago and it's become a thing since. So if you see ducks on a Jeep, now you know why. While it's not the most engaging car to drive given the lack of power, when you push it, you'll discover it has plenty of grip, even in these wet conditions. The other useful thing is the car's ride height. It might be tiny and it might only have front wheel drive for now, but it's happy to be chucked off road, up tall curbs, and into many places where a normal family car might struggle. As for efficiency, that's good too. In my hands, it was easy to manage between three and five miles per kilowatt hour at outside temperatures of around 19 degrees C. That's thanks to a heat pump that comes as standard, which takes in cool air from outside, compresses and heats it, and then uses it to warm the battery for better efficiency. Given the 54 kilowatt hour battery, expect an approximate worst case of 150 miles in cold conditions on the motorway and best case of around 340 miles in the city during warmer weather. One question I had about the Jeep Avenger is whether it had the personality of a Jeep. And that stems from the fact that underneath, this is essentially the same car as a Peugeot E2008 or a Vauxhall Mocha. It shares a lot of its DNA with those cars. But the more time you spend with it, the more you come to realize that even though it drives very similarly to those cars, it does have its own unique Jeepish personality. Obviously, a lot of that is down to the ruggedly cute overall design, complete with Easter eggs, by the way a ladybird on the roof, a small child on the windscreen gazing up at the stars at the opposite corner, a silhouette of the Avenger with a JJ initials for Junior Jeep on the boot lid, and a little mountain range under the rear glass to inspire the spirit of adventure. I think the Jeep Avenger is a bit of a strange car, really. It's an all-American brand, and yet it was designed by Europeans in Europe and will never be sold in America. It looks, in pictures anyway, like a big sturdy SUV, but the reality is that it's the size of a Vauxhall Corsa and it really wasn't designed for off-roading. It was built for urban use. It's designed to be a car for the masses and yet it's really not cheap. It has a starting price of over 36,000 pounds. It could be a recipe that really confuses customers, but the more time you spend with it, the more you like it. Is it the best car of 2023? Well, I'd be doing a tremendous disservice to the likes of the Porsche 911 GT3 RS and the Ferrari Pura Sangue to name but a few. Best family car in its segment and price bracket? Well, now we're talking, it's definitely up there for sure. Go take a look, you won't be disappointed. Thanks for watching guys. Don't forget, Auto Trader give away an electric car every single month. The prize this month is a brand new Tesla Model Y, and we also have a bonus prize. This is a Rally Motors electric bike. It could be yours. Enter now. The details are down below.